Hey, what's up everybody? Chad here from grayscalegorilla.com. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you one of my favorite tricks I use to never have to name a render again. Okay, so we've all done this. We've all went to render out our sequence and ended up realizing that we number one, forgot to name it properly, or two, even worse, overwrote a previous render that we didn't mean to overwrite. This has happened to all of us. So this trick that I'm gonna show you using tokens and CV tokens from Cineversity is gonna mean all of that is a thing of the past. You're never gonna have to name an output ever again. Every time I show an artist this trick, they're like, why haven't I been doing this forever? Why, am, why, aren't, why isn't everybody doing this? So I'm gonna show you how to set this up and you can tweak it how you like and hopefully it'll save you some headaches and maybe not get you in trouble for overriding somebody else's render. Let's take a look. Okay, so we all have done this. We've set up our project to render and we go to our output and we hit the save tab and we've filled out the name of our image and placed it where we need to place it. And we go ahead and let's say we're using takes. Hopefully you've watched my takes video, by the way. Everybody go watch my takes video. Um, takes are amazing. I use them all the time. So here's a typical scenario. You set up your image output. You go to uh, render all your takes, and it gives you this warning. It says, uh, hey, you know what? You're naming all of your takes the same thing. And just so you know, it's going to overwrite them again and again and again. Well, that's a drag. So you can go into the render settings, and you can see there's a little arrow over here. And it is the tokens. The tokens are an extremely powerful feature that I believe they introduced in R17. Now you can see I probably have quite a few more tokens than you might have. Uh, that's because I'm using the Cineversity tokens plugin called CV tokens. Now you're going to need that plugin to continue with this tutorial. So if you don't have it, go pick it up. If you're just interested in it, keep watching. If you're not interested in it, then hey, this video is probably not for you. But okay, so let's keep going here. So how do we fix this? How do we just at least make these takes not overwrite each other uh, so that we can render them out properly? Well, that's, that's where these tokens come in. So these tokens are little bits of information that are gonna pull data and add them to the name of your render. So in our case, we want to append the name of our horribly named uh, image sequence, our image here called, it's going into a folder called Final Final Broncos Coffee maker final final, which we've all done, and hopefully after this video you'll never do it again. So we're going to append this with a token. So we need to append it with a token that maybe is something having to do with these takes, right? Because that's what we—that's the only difference in all these images. They're different takes. So let's just come down here and see. Up oh, there's a current take. Let's try that. And now what that's going to do is this dollar sign take is going to say, okay, he wants me to grab whatever the take name is and append my name of this, of this output with the take name. So now if we hit render on all of these, you're going to see over here that it's going to actually render out each one of these takes. Actually, I didn't mean to render out the, uh, the main take. We don't definitely don't need that one. Uh, we're going to wait for it to go here, and it'll do the main take. And then you can see it's got the underscore main, and then it's got our underscore orange, and then it's going to have the underscore orange red. All the names of our takes are going to be appended, and those are going to be good to go. And if I right-click here and I say show and output, output and explore, we're going to see all of that stuff happening right here. It's like dumping them all in the same place. But at least they're not overwriting each other. So the idea behind this technique is built off of this premise, built off of all of these different tokens. Now you don't have to use takes, I'm just using it to make a point here, but you do need to use tokens and CV tokens. So let's talk a little bit about what these tokens mean. So what do we have here? By default, R17 is going to come with the following tokens. It's going to come with this uh, project token, which is the PRJ, the dollar sign camera, which is going to grab your current camera name, a dollar sign take, which we just did right then where we took our take name, the dollar sign pass, which could actually, you could do all your multi pass that way, dollar sign user pass would be multi pass or object channel name. Dollar sign frame is going to grab the current animation frame. Dollar sign resolution will grab the current render name. Dollar sign res, uh, sorry, dollar sign RS will grab the current render settings name. 
which is another cool feature. Dollar sign range will grab you your range, and dollar sign FPS will grab your FPS. Now, those are great, and those are really powerful, but they're lacking a few things to make it so I would never have to render or name a render again. And that's going to be what CV Tokens does. Now, CV Tokens is a plugin from Cineversity, like I said, that you'll need to get. And it expands the use of tokens. And it gives you more tokens to use. All right, so let's go through what uh, Cineversity's uh, CV Tokens adds to the, to the list. They have the most important ones, which are time and date. So it's going to be dollar sign year, dollar sign year two digit, dollar sign month, dollar sign DD for date and day, dollar sign hour, dollar sign minute, dollar sign SS set date second. Now that's the most important one. We're going to get to that one in a minute. Uh, dollar sign CV author, which just tells you who owns that project or who's, uh, who's the author name. Dollar sign u uh, CV username, which is going to grab your OS username. Dollar sign CV computer, which is going to grab the OS computer name. Uh, and the CV renderer, which is actually, I use that one quite a bit because I jump around a lot of different renders. And the CV height, uh, which is going to give you the dimensions of your, of your render. So with these together combined, we can create a one-time uh, output that we will never have to change as long as we stick to this workflow. All right, so let's jump in and see exactly how that works. Here we are in that same scene, but this time I've created... A, I've put all of these tokens together to form this string, which, by the way, you can change it however you want, but I'm going to walk you through what this output is doing and why I'll never have to name it again if I don't want to. So immediately, we'll start from the left to the right. You can see I'm going back to directories and <clears throat> putting it into a renders folder, C4D folder, and then it's going to create a folder on its own using the CV renderer uh, token. So in my case, this may not be useful for everyone, but because I jump around in Arnold and Redshift and Octane Physical, I like to have these separated out so I know exactly what I created these images in. So on top of that, it's going to put it into a folder using the take name, which is going to be these names over here. Then this is the most important section right here, the date and the time. It's going to be month, date, year, and then it's going to be hour, minutes, seconds. So if you're like me, you're rendering a lot of test images out and you you don't want to have to constantly keep overwriting or remember to version up and whatnot. So the ability to do it by date and time means that I will never overwrite a render again. The other important thing is if you render out an image, an image sequence, uh, if it doesn't have the project name in it, then how do you know where you created it? How do you, How can you go back and tweak it? So that's when this next take. Now this is the take, or sorry, this is the uh, the token string that's actually outputting to my image. It's the I've dropped it into the folder that has the the time, and now we're actually creating the name of our output. So the name of my output is going to be the dollar sign project. So it's going to grab the project name. In this case, Braun Coffee Maker Version One V O O One C A. It's going to grab the take name, which is going to grab it from the takes. It's going to grab the camera name in case you have multiple cameras. In my case, I got this medium shot, medium cam. And then it's going to put the resolution on this. And I'm outputting a PNG, but you could just as easily do this all down. And here in multi-pass and render out EXRs, it doesn't really matter. The important thing is, is that you've created this string and that you save this in like a default project or maybe on your desktop or somewhere where you can always plug it into your output. Especially if you find yourself working this way a lot or you're in a studio, you collectively decide how you want this to be organized and that's how everybody uses it. And I recommend doing that if you're at a studio, sitting down and figuring out what the heck, which string of tokens should we use in, in order to never have to have our freelancers or our staff artists screw up the output name and nobody knows where it is. Also, I recommend getting editors involved because they're going to want to know, they're going to want to organize this maybe a specific way if they're bringing in, in clips to edit. Anyway, all right, we've got our output set. I'm going to go ahead and render out all my marked takes to the PV, and we're just going to let this go. I'm going to come back when it's done rendering. Okay, it's all done rendering. Uh, we've got all of our, all four of our takes rendered. Boom, boom, boom. We've got our name. It's the Brawn Coffee Maker. It's got the file name, which is great. So it's got the file name right here, 
It's got the uh, the color, which is the take right here. It's got the camera, and it's got the output. Now, uh, we could organize this in so many different ways. It's really up to you, but the important thing there is that uh, we set those dates and times, right? So now if I open up my, my Explorer here, and we just kind of find one of these takes. We can go to the orange. We can see today's date. We can go in there, and we can see all the different times that I've rendered this out, and I didn't overwrite it once. So here's the one that we just did right now. So, okay, I'm going to close down my render settings, and I'm not, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not changing a thing. We still are outputting. We're saving right now. I'm going to hit render again. Now, normally, this would overwrite any sort of render change that we made. In fact, let's do something sort of drastic here. I'm just going to jump into our main take in our objects, and I'm just going to orbit the camera a little bit off to the side so we know this is different. Now... I'm not changing any of my output names. I'm just going to go back into my takes, and I'm going to render out all the selected mark takes again. Now, if I hadn't done this trick, we'd be overwriting right now. We'd be overwriting our previous version, which is really... <laughs> that sucks. I've done it so many times. It's a horrible feeling to get in in the morning and realize that all of your renders uh, that you thought you had versioned up or saved, that they're gone. All right, so we'll come back when this is done and show you uh, what happened. Okay, so it finished up. I am going to out. I'm going to check out that output. I don't know if you knew this, but this is a, a cool little trick. Let me move this up. Hopefully, y'all know this. But if you right click in your PV right here, you can actually just navigate right to where that image is. So you can see right here, we've got our Redshift uh, folder in the white category or the white take rather. We go into the date, we grab the latest time, and we have that new version. But hey, guess what? It happened at 1.58.59 seconds, so 1.58 p.m., 59 seconds, this render dropped. And you can see the one that we did just before that is still safe and sound, and we don't have to worry about it. This has saved me so many times. Okay, so another trick that I want to show you is when you version up a scene. So you don't have to organize it the way that I have here. In fact, we could build a token string that would save us uh, the trouble of every time we version up a file, it could put it in that directory. It could make a new folder for us. So in our case, let's go ahead and do that. Let's put it right here. We're gonna build a renderer and then we're gonna do a project take. So I'm just gonna come over to here and grab the project name, boom. And we'll go ahead and throw a slash in there so that it knows to create it as a folder. And now it's going to create, it's going to go into the render, it's going to go back to directories, go into the renderers folder, into the C4D, into the renderer. In our case, it's going to be Redshift. It's going to drop it into a folder named after the project. Then it's going to apply all the same things that we had before. But let's version up our scene because we did change the camera. We probably should version this up. So I'm going to change this to uh, version two. Cool. And I'm going to render this out again, and we'll drop back in and see uh, exactly what happened. Okay, so that last one, uh, last one dropped, and now we have a new folder sitting in the Redshift folder with the name of our project file. Now, this is important so that you can trace back where this render came from. So now we have all the exact same great, you know, organizational features. Look at the date, the time, everything's all in there. But now it's also tied to the version of the file, which is really great because now uh, every time you render, if you want to just version up, you can do that and it's going to it's gonna mean that you have a unique name that ties back to that, that scene file. So you can always go back in and edit that scene file that made those images, which is sometimes a huge problem. You render something out and you don't remember exactly what scene uh, you used to make those images. So this following simple rules like this using tokens and CV tokens is a great way uh, to fix that and, and hopefully prevent those sorts of mistakes from, uh, from biting you in the ass. Okay, so um, that's about it. That's about all I wanted to show you uh, with this trick. And if, if you organize this the way that you want, you'll never have to name an output again. Uh, anyway, so enjoy um, and I'll see you next time. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Uh, I hope you got something out of that. Hopefully, you're not having to name your renders anymore, and you can use this technique and never have to worry about any of that garbage ever again. If you like what you saw, give me a thumbs up. And if you want to know, every time we drop a new video, hit the bell, get those notifications going. Um, so yeah, until next time, I'll see you around.